Support companies that help support the Stony Ridge Farm. Subscribe to the channel and contact Farm Fence Solutions for all of your fence building and tornado wire needs. Hey there folks, this is Josh Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to another beautiful day here on the Stony Ridge. There's a boo-boo here, huh? Had a little whoopsie. Had a little whoopsie with a Caterpillar 953 loader and the tornado wire fence. So this is Titan fixed knot. 13, 48, 12. That's right. Right? Yep. And we'll define all that stuff for you guys. We're going to show you how we repair a total disaster, a total mess of a fence. And we got Luke here with Farm Fence Solutions to teach us how the pros do it. So if you ever have a woven wire piece of fence that needs to be repaired, or even a, a high tensile wire or barbed wire, this is going to be kind of the technique you'll use to repair a broken fence line. Right? Yep. All right. Let's get busy. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome to the Stony Ridge Farm Channel. If this is your first time here, please pound that like button, subscribe to the channel. Love to have you back. We're on a 150 acre first generation farm here in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains in North Carolina. We've got a special guest here. Luke has come all the way out from Indiana en route to another fence job, and uh, he's gonna help me out fixing this thing. We're good friends. We made good friends through YouTube, which has been super awesome. Uh, I've got tons of awesome fencing content out there, and this is just part of it. So what we have, and you can see I've got step-in post right here. Um, someone backed around this corner was pulling a tree out of the woods right there and creamed the fence right here. And you don't have to get into the fence too awful much with a Caterpillar 953 loader. It's a 30,000 pound machine. You can't even feel the fence when you get into it. So he didn't notice it and we got a boo-boo. We'll get you a close up of this boo-boo. We're gonna cut the boo-boo out. We're gonna take these chains and what's called a strainer bar. Strainer bar, is that right? Yeah, wedge style strainer wedge bar. Wedge style strainer bar from Strain Right from Farm Fence Solutions. We're gonna wedge style strain this. There's one down here, there's one down there and we're gonna ratchet this back tight. So we'll cut out the bad spot right here, right down there and we'll crimp in a new good spot. Now we could tie knots and do all that stuff, but in the interest of time, we're just gonna use crimps. Are those strain right uh, crimps? They are. Okay, so we'll use strain right crimps. We'll show you guys exactly how all this goes and we're gonna pull out the bad spot. Thanks Josh for having us back to the Stony Ridge Farm. Uh, I know our relationship started uh, via just one comment uh, on one of your fence videos in the beginning and it's uh, developed into a real friendship. And it's amazing the community that we've built uh, in the agricultural fence world uh, just with your content and the, and the energy and effort you've put into it. And uh, I sure appreciate you having me down. It's just nice. We were walking, walking fences uh, a couple evenings ago and it's just amazing to see the difference in the last four or five years that we've been coming here. And now there's, you know, 30 some mama cows up on the hill and they look beautiful and they're all in great shape. And it's just so neat to be here and see all this come to life. I just really appreciate being here. So what we're gonna do to start with, uh, because the posts are on this side, we've gotta do this repair on the other side so that our chains aren't tied up in the post, but uh, we'll just get some stuff moved to the other side. Start bringing this fence together with the two sets of wedge boards. We'll use what we call boundary strainers in the middle, which are a chain walking device, similar to just a, a plain wire puller, but we're gonna have to use extra chain to span that, that gap. I think it's about 50 feet here that we'll end up replacing. Uh, so we'll start moving things to the other side and get to work. So the way that this wedge board works is you've got a profile on this side that matches the profile of this side. And then once this is slipped through around the wire, then we use the wedges as a tensioning device, drive those tight all the way down. So there's no bolts, uh, nuts to lose there. And it's just uh, using a hammer. And also the benefit of this is that the wedge never touches the wire. So that wire sandwiched in there uh, on the smooth interior and you don't do anything uh, to damage the surface of your wire. Very good, very, very good, boss. Well, just a fuzz. Whoa, there she went. Okay. 
Don't stick your fingers in there. I'd like to stay friends. So as you get these started and work your way down, the, you know, the, the wedge above the one that you're driving in will loosen up. So it's a, you gotta go up and down the row a time or two. It's also good to keep your wedges lubed with a little bit of light oil. They don't need to be soaked, but just enough. So the first time I got to use a set of these uh, strain right wedge boards was in Wales. Uh, and I had a good friend of mine, Paul Harris, that connected me with a guy named John Morgan and Cy Gibbs. Cy, Cy Gibbs picked me up on uh, the side of the M6 motorway in England. And we went over to Wales and uh, John had just gotten a set of these. And so I called strain right immediately and ended up, I think my first set, uh, which this is one of, th this is my first set. I ended up costing me something crazy like two grand in shipping just to get them here from New Zealand. And now we bring it in by the container load, but it's, it's uh, definitely quality equipment. We believe in it. Yes, sir. There you go, Bobby. On the boundary strainers, there's several options. This is a snap hook end. And then we also have a D shackle end uh, and a flat hook end. So it's, I get asked a lot, what's the, what's the best one? And we've got them all and we use them all. Just ends up being personal preference. Uh, I prefer to put your hooks on uh, away from the fence so that if that were to slip, it doesn't get hooked on a vertical stay. Makes them easy to take off. This is called a boundary strainer. And then we're using a, what we call an anchor chain as an extension. Quite a little bit of wrong stuff going on here, but we're gonna make it work because that's what you do when you're a fencer, right? Okay, so the critical part here is to make sure that your chain is pretty straight because there's no way to swivel it the way we've got it anchored off. And when you snap your chain on there to your boundary strainers, those just walk forward like so. And then once it's tight, we won't have to babysit it quite as much with this be able to run right with it one handed there. We'll do something similar on the bottom. that chain nice and tight and when you're handling any kind of a chain strainer if you just palm it there and squeeze it that opens the jaws up to put them on or take it off either one and we're tight so the most important thing here Luke is to make sure that your chain isn't twisted because this needs to be facing one direction. It'll try to either flip over or go go one direction or the other. Is well, that right? yeah, the, the dogs here, yeah. they won't hit a link square, and so they won't latch. 
Gotcha. And then you've got to get pliers out to try to roll that chain, and once that chain's tight, it's hard to do. So, so that's why it's important to not have any twist or anything in there, and this chain is just straight as an arrow. Check it out. Nice. When you're not uh, hooked off solid with a, with a hook, this is just a plain wire puller, so it's made for one strand, but it's got a swivel. So you can just snap it on and go, and if it is crooked, it's easy to roll it. Cool. So. Now, people can buy these uh, at Farm Fin Solutions? Yes. Right? Yeah. Good deal. We're like everybody else, running a little bit low on stock, but uh, did get an email from Strain Right last week that we've got a full container leaving on the 18th of March. So, uh, good Lord willing, we'll have that in the next few months and be stocked back up. The best. Strain Right. Awesome. We use uh, Knipix uh, mini bolt cutters, which we also stock at Farm Fence Solutions um, to cut, uh, especially high tensile wire. It's very difficult to cut with just uh, like lineman pliers or clines, a lot of people call them. Uh, so these are just a one hand, especially if you're working a lot and when you're stripping knots, just to cut right out on the tip is hard to do uh, with the lower quality tools. But these, these really do the job nice and last a good long while. So. We're going to cut this out of here, uh, and then we'll cut the, the new piece, we'll cut a stay, and then the crimp will go right in the middle, and that leaves us just enough room to kind of finish it off and make it look nice. Uh, and then our crimp won't be right on the, right on the post. Mm -hmm. These are post ties I'm taking off right here. Make sure they don't end up in an animal's foot. Don't leave pieces of wire laying in your pastures or you'll have hardware disease. That's hardware. So what we've got uh, here is a strain right crimp sleeve. Uh, we prefer these, they're gridded on the inside. It's an aluminum sleeve. We'll put this on with a crimp tool in a moment, but uh, in the structure of the wire are these tension curves. And what a tension curve does uh, is serve as an indicator of how tight the wire is. And it also serves as a shock absorber. So in the, um, well, you can see how much deeper the, the uh, tension curve is and wire that hasn't been stretched versus wire that is stretched. So that gives you an idea. Uh, you want to pull about half of that tension curve out or a little bit more, but then it leaves enough in there uh, that gets you through the dips and dives uh, that you find on a fence row uh, over the crest of a hill and you're able to do that without a, what we call a bias cut. So that's tornado's claim to fame is the lack of slack line wires. So all those line wires will have the same tension and it's kind of a magic trick that you can pull it down in a sharp dip and every line wire will still have the same tension. And the way that they do that uh, is by taking better care of their machines, uh, keeping them dialed in better, having better trained operators and more operators watching the process. So uh, they stop those problems before they happen. Once we've straightened out the tension curve a little bit, then it makes it easier to slip a crimp sleeve over. And then we'll come back uh, with the next piece of fence, come in here and this will get crimped and then we'll finish off our tails where it's nice and pretty. We're sliding these crimp sleeves on and uh, we bring them up. We use, use our hand as a guide, uh, which would be the same on each, each piece there or where we want this bend. That does two things. It keeps that crimp sleeve where we want it while we wait on the next piece of wire to come in. And then it's already gonna be started where we can finish this off nice and neat. So this is an ultra crimp from Strain Right also, and we've got two more crimps left right here. Um, if we wanted to get all artsy with this, we could tie termination knots right here, but we're not getting all super artsy. We're trying to knock the job out because we got more work to do today. So what I'm gonna do on these crimp sleeves right here is I'm gonna crimp it three times and we'll just show you that real quick. So one, slip it down, two, slip it down, Right about there, three. Now that looks fairly easy. We'll get the next one up here. And you can see that that just seals it off good, okay? 
And again, these crimps have a grit inside of them to, that helps keep them from slipping. That's what sets these crimps apart from the competition. Gonna get her right in the right spot, land, pop, okay. Right there, bam, okay. Now this is just as tight and probably even better uh, than the original wire right here. So this is gonna hold really, really good. We're gonna go down, do the same thing on the other side. So all the way down, evenly spaced. Again, tighten, 13, 48, 12. 48 inches high, 13 line wires. 13, 48, 12? 48 inches high, yeah. 12 inch stay spacing. So yeah. this is your stay wire up and down. This is your line wire going across horizontal. Cool. Right on. So we're using a, a strain right plane wire puller and what we're using that for is to take the last of the slack out one line at a time as we crimp this uh, piece of repair wire in. Uh, these come in several different varieties. This is a springless. They come with springs or without springs. I prefer springless. This one has a swivel and it's also got a swivel on the other end of the anchor chain which is a longer chain and it's got a hook on the end than what we would normally run with this just in a plane wire deal. Uh, but that's what we prefer to use. And as we bring this together, our goal is to keep these knots spaced just the same so that we don't end up with a slack line wire in here. And so to do that, we can make finite adjustments with the plane wire pullers. They work the same as a boundary strainer uh, on the chain. So you just snap them on and then you're able to walk right up the chain and you can set that to wherever you need it to get your crimp sleeve put on straight. So we're on the second wire right here from the top and the second wire from the top here. Each individual wire needs to be pulled together here on this end. So we're all connected up on that end with all 13 line wires and each individual wire has to be crimped here. This is a bit of a process, but if you do it right, it should be stronger than what we had in here in the first place. It's way easier if you just don't run a Caterpillar wheel loader into or track loader into your fence. These things happen. It does, <laughs> to the best of us. To the best of us. So again, same thing with the crimper. Luke's got this ready for me. This is a two man job, really. Uh, you could do it with one person, but two is <laughs> so much better. And we'll line up on our crimp. Ah, bam, good to go. Once again, crimping it. Uh, three times so three times 13 times two how much is that somebody post a comment tell me what that is so we've got 13 wires we've got to do three crimps a piece times two so 26 78 seven, 26 times two three three 78. 78 all right good math on camera really hard <laughs> <laughs> all right Luke are we ready we're ready to take the boundary strainers off. All right, cool. So we'll release these boundary strainers and this wire may come up just a little bit and then we're gonna go ahead and tie off to our post right here. And these are the wire ties that we use to tie off to the post. So we just clipped some of these off. Um, it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be great. Thank goodness we got it fixed. You might think it's gonna just go boing and spring out, but it really won't. This will just be a fairly gentle process right here. You see how Luke's taking that strainer chain off right there. And then we've got one more right here. Pretty easy, pretty simple. All right, now that we've got the tension off of our strainer, boards right here or our uh, uh, wedge boards. We'll go ahead and knock the wedges back out and then we'll tie off to this post and this post right here. There we go. At least two apart. We'll go on down and do the next one.
So we're gonna go three tight wraps, ring her off, and we get no sharp edge right here to hurt our animals. So we'll do that with every single one of these. We'll just do three tight wraps and snap them off and that'll be it. Beautiful. Put a little handle on here with the hammer and then we'll ring it off once it's around. There you go. That takes practice. That takes practice. So the last step in this process right here, you can see we're way up off the ground. I'm about six foot five. It's a four foot fence that needs to come down at about two and a half feet. Uh, you can use any number of technique, but this technique is just gonna be me putting my weight on the fence while Luke ties this tie. Let me show you one of the ties real quick. Uh, let's see that drill right there, buddy. So these ties are what ties it to the post. These get squeezed together and they go in this chuck right here. They get squeezed together like that. And then this kind of looks like an egg beater right now, but it's gonna be around the post. And what it does is twist the ends off right here and breaks them when we drop those over in the post and that'll tie it down to the post. Now, if you're pulling your fence wire down, you wanna start tying from the bottom up. If you're pulling your fence wire up, you wanna tie from the bottom down. Is that correct? That's correct. All right, so let's get busy. Now, I've lost 75 pounds. I might not have <laughs> <laughs> enough of what they call that A <laughs> to Scoot get this step. done. Yep, oh, I see it. Yep. There you go. Here we go. Put some booty on it. There we go. A little bit more. Can you give me, I don't know, 30 more pounds? 30 more pounds. Yeah. Don't have it. When you're holding pressure on like this, you got to get about three wire ties in place before you can release pressure. We'll probably do four. There we go. So we're holding pressure right here. We'll show you guys how these twist on and the ends break off of them. Pretty cool. What well, doesn't break off will eventually break off. Just get rid of that guy. Whoop. Drop him down in there. And they will disintegrate eventually. Very nice. All right, guys, that's how you repair a high tensile woven wire mess, right? It was a mess. It was a mess. So this, this could happen if a tree fell on it or whatever. And we were talking about when you build a fence like this and you've got trees that are impending doom, kind of like this tree back here behind us, uh, we want to put our post not right up next to the tree. In other words, we want to set it up where if part of this tree falls on this fence, it doesn't fall right on the post. It falls in an open area so we can do a repair just like we did right here. There are a couple trees. Did you see the pine trees leaned over yeah, the fence? Yeah. yeah, there's a couple trees that are looking a little shady. So we'll cut those in a future video and guys stick around. There's gonna be lots more farm fencing to go here on the Stony Ridge Farm. I've got a post driver to use and we're gonna do a Tool Tuesday on this awesome post driving machine over here. So thanks a lot, Luke. Appreciate all your help. Good to be here. Yeah. Guys, strong, super strong kung fu grip hands. <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you next time on the Stony Ridge. Woo! <laughs> Yo, come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your kids. We're living life here in sweet. That's the way it's supposed to be, Stony Ridge. Woo! And action! So the last step in this... Clap, clap. Go ahead, clap. Everybody, got a clap? Yeah, I got one. All right. <laughs> yeah, we probably gonna break the chain. Mmm. Mmm. How's this math working out? Not, not so great yet, but it will. Thumbnail. <laughs>